easily one of the most difficult things to do today is to keep up to date with all of the products coming out from Amazon as well as the new features for those products and the new updates that they give you. So that's what we have here today for Amazon's voice assistant and their whole smart home system. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and today I'm going to take the frustration out of automation by helping you keep up to date with Amazon's voice assistant. Now, we have a ton of things to go through, all the latest updates, but I'm going to start with what you're seeing on the desk over here. Now, this is not all I've gotten from Amazon as of late, but you can see the Echo Glow, the Blink Mini, and the Echo Buds. Now, I actually also have a couple of Fire HD 8 tablets. So, which one of these would you like to see reviewed or would you like to see them all reviewed here on Automate Your Life? So leave that down below because I'd like to hear from you guys. This helps direct me what I need to focus on and bring to the channel first. I've been trying all of these for a little bit of time now and they're all interesting products that have a place in an Amazon based smart home. Now let's get into some of these updates and the first one I want to tell you about is actually the ability to drop in on all of your echo speakers and that's actually the syntax that you're going to use so it's drop in on all my devices and this opens up an intercom type of system for you to speak between every one of your echo devices in your smart home drop in everywhere group drop in and other enhanced features in the future will use the amazon cloud to mix audio video and other me okay Connecting to three available devices. Hello? I can't hear you. No, you gotta go closer to the speaker, I think. Another absolutely great feature that I think a lot of us have wanted to have for a long time is the ability to set reminders to be played out on all of your Echo devices. And I think this is a really important thing. Now, you have to go into the application at this point and actually set that on the reminder to be across all of your devices, but you can make that selection. Right now, that's a US only feature, but I'll tell you guys, my simple way of getting around this, and it has very little impact on how I use these devices other than getting me the new features is to actually go to the Amazon website on a computer or a Mac, whatever you want to use. You can go there, log into your account, and you can actually switch where your account is based out of, and that gets you the access to all the features under that account. So you can actually do that, log out of the voice assistant account, and then log back in, and you will have access to pretty much everything in the US. So that's how I do it. Now, again, there are some drawbacks and I'll leave a link down below to a short tutorial video that shows you how to do that. But for example, I'm here in Canada, that allows me to install the Echo Buds, it allowed me to install the Echo Glow, and before the Blank Mini was being sold here, it allowed me to actually integrate that into Amazon's voice assistant. So that plus these other features like the ability to put reminders on all your devices, I think makes it worth it in a lot of cases. One video that was a big deal for a lot of people that we put out just last week was the fact that your Ring video doorbells can actually automatically show up on your Echo Show displays and actually the Echo Spot as well. I'll leave a link down below to that video. There's also a second link down below to another video we created just a couple couple of weeks ago that helps you trigger Amazon voice assistant routines with anything from Samsung smart things now I will tell you one thing about that video and there are a couple of people who are struggling or I've had a couple of people say this isn't working for me I don't know and the honest truth is I don't know why that's going on with just a few select people, but I'd love to hear the people who've made that work and then the people who haven't, and maybe we can narrow down on what exactly is going on, what you're doing within your routines when it's working and what you're doing within your routines when it's not. But both of those links are down below, very useful videos if you own Echo Shows and for the second one, Samsung Smart Things. Speaking of routines, one of the reasons I actually created that video was because Samsung Smart Things has the ability to trigger automation at sunrise and sunset. Well, if you didn't notice, 
inside of the routines within Amazon's voice assistant application, you can actually trigger at sunset or sunrise and you have time offset off of that. So that becomes a very useful time trigger use case. Now, maybe you wanna get grandma and grandpa and echo show and you can set a routine to start over at their place at that same kind of time at sunset and have all their lighting come on they don't have to get up speaking of grandma and grandpa there's actually a reason i'm referring to them and that's because at one point when i went into the amazon voice assistant application i saw a card sitting there that actually gave step-by-step -step instructions for how to give your parents or another family member who maybe can't do this themselves how to actually set up and give them an echo show device or an echo device in general and i think this is a really useful thing right now with everything going on in the world so i saved those instructions i'm not going to go through all of the components right now, it's not a very hard process. You can absolutely do it and send them an Echo Show, especially those devices, and have them have it set up when they just unpack it, plug it into the wall, and then they've got a lot of capability there, and you can help manage it from that point forward as well, remotely. So I've included those instructions actually over on our community boards. This is a great place if you're someone who has a lot of Amazon gear. There's a lot of great automators over there who are using that gear in their smart home, and they share a lot of knowledge, and I've put this link with the, these instructions there for you as well. You can actually now share photos by going into the communication tab and hitting that share button. And then you have to hit an okay button to allow your photos to be sent to friends and family or other contacts. Now you get to choose whether to take a live picture or your photo library. You choose the picture and then you choose the contact from the list of people who could receive this. And what they're going to see up on the device is a shared photo and they can tap on that it'll go into the photo and then there's actually some responses that they can give on the display. <laughs> Now they can also add these photos to their home screen by going into the settings and then going down to wallpaper and clock and then hitting the change button on Amazon Photos and what will show up inside of there is their album for things that you've shared with them. So once they turn this on once, anything else you share with them will continue to show up on their home screen. One more family or friend suggestion if you have a couple of friends who, you know, they have an Amazon voice assistant account and you want to make sure that you're staying connected to them, there's actually a new feature available where, where you can tell the voice assistant, and, and this is the exact syntax, help me stay connected to and then that friend's name. And that what they will do is actually remind you when they are available. This is a bit of a creepy thing, but I think a lot of people might wanna use that to help them stay connected with certain friends during all of this self-quarantining that we're having to do. Speaking of creepy, you can be creepy if you'd like. You can actually send a virtual hug and that's the entire syntax. So it's send a hug. To whom? I can message contacts who have signed up for Alexa messaging. To see which contacts have signed up, say show my contacts. One thing that might have slipped under the radar for a lot of you, but I think is really useful, is the fact that the Audible books can be read across multiple speakers. So you can actually, just like you would with your music, play it across a group or play it on all devices. Now, if you're not familiar with what the Audible service is, this is where the books are not being read by Amazon's voice assistant. They're actually being read by the author or somebody else, some voice actor. There is, as I spoke about earlier, a new Fire HD 8 tablet. And there's a couple of interesting things about it. Number one, they increase the speed with a new processor it has more RAM and there's a USB-C charging capability so that's different from the previous version which had the micro USB now 
that is great and all, but what they really have done is, according to them, made it 30% faster. So now there's a plus version with the ability to wirelessly charge and they've actually created their own mount. Now you can go get the mount and the HD plus the HD 8 plus fire tablet for around $140 and it's a smart display at that point. So there's a really interesting entry point there for people who would want a tablet, a fire tablet, and then on top of that want the ability to have it act as a smart display. So that's a really interesting product to me, something that I think I wanna go out and I'd, I'd like to hear your guys' opinions on whether or not I should bring that onto the channel and kind of compare it to say an Echo Show 8, which is around that price point. I wanna get these locations right, so I'm going to read a little bit here. I do know the Echo Auto is finally available in Australia here. That was just in the last half a month to a month. And uh, actually the Blink Mini here, this little camera, is now available in Canada and the UK. And that's kind of happened in the last month as well. It was initially launched only in the US. Now, this is the one I gotta read, Volkswagen Golf 8. Uh, you can actually get Amazon's voice assistant in that car and a bit of, obviously, access to your whole smart home in the UK, Germany, France, Italy, and Spain. And I will say, when I was at CES this year, I did notice how aggressively Amazon was going to go after the vehicle market. I mean, they had their own kind of in-home uh, grown solutions here with a couple of different vehicles that they were working on, including replacing an entire fleet of delivery vehicles with an electric vehicle. So really interesting stuff. And then Volkswagen's kind of jumped into that. Now, if you also missed it, the Sonos Arc has Amazon's voice assistant on board. You can actually use that. You gotta be careful with those Sonos products right now. There's a couple of things. Uh, the new S2 operating system, as soon as you upgrade to that in your old speakers, you have to move everything to S2. You, you can't have the old S1 and the S2 speakers playing together at all, which we've talked about on the channel, but that's really a big split in their ecosystem now. Uh, but you do have Amazon's voice assistant, and some of the reviews that have come out say that's an incredible uh, sound bar there. Ring actually sent out a recent survey to a number of their customers and they were asking questions about potential new features. So this is way out on the horizon guys, but they're asking about enabling or disabling the camera both physically and remotely, uh, visual and audible alarms, whether or not people would want both of those to deter would-be criminals trying to steal things or do things. And then the really big one that was interesting to me, potential object, facial, and vehicle license plate uh, detection and identification. So that would be something that's kind of that next level. And they were asking existing customers whether or not those would be important capabilities to them. This is something that I'm not sure is going to be used a ton, but you might use it if you go over to someone's place all the time, they have Echo speakers, you have Echo speakers at home and you want access to your account while you're there. You can actually ask, Connect my account. Okay. When you connect, you can ask for your own linked music services. Let me look up your account. What's your phone number? Now, this takes a couple of settings to be enabled and they'll get the prompts. When you go and you request this to happen, they will get the prompts right up on screen to actually allow you to connect your account. This is a very interesting option, something you might wanna offer when people come to your place and probably works pretty well with parties with people who have different playlists set up. Now, one of the things that is fairly important is having a voice profile. It allows you to lock down lots of things with Amazon's voice assistant. And one of the newer features that I wanna walk you through here is actually a profanity filter at an account level that then you can go and turn off with your voice. If you'd like to listen to normal music, maybe your kids aren't around, you wanna let loose a little bit, well, you can turn off that explicit content filter. Now, you can turn this filter on within Amazon's voice assistant application. You're seeing how to do it right now on screen. 
screen and then again you can turn that off so this will protect with only certain services so you have to actually pay attention to which services can use this and obviously guys you're going to be able to use Amazon's music service with this filter on and that will stop your kids from being able to hear music that you maybe don't want them to hear. If you weren't aware the Echo look is actually going away. Amazon is done with that product. Now remember guys I asked you leave this down below. What do you want to see? Come on to the channel. Do you want to hear about the kids Fire HD 8 or you want to hear about these products sitting over here or there's something else you'd like us to review on the channel. Leave those comments down below. Otherwise you can go watch those two tutorial videos that we talked about earlier on in the video and stay tuned to automate your life because I have some fantastic content coming related to Amazon's Fire TV sticks and cubes. So thanks for watching everyone and of course don't hate automate.